So for my second presidential address, I uh, elected to talk about the bees, wasps and ants, uh, otherwise known as the aculeate hymenoptera of my local patch, which is the central high weald. And I'm going to give a brief introduction to the habitats of that region and then share with you some of the characteristic uh, bees, wasps and ants of that area. So just to introduce the group, the bees, wasps and ants belong to the large order Hymenoptera, which falls into three major categories. At the bottom of the family tree, as it were, we have the symphyta, which are the sawflies, and the wood wasps, which mainly have <clears throat> plant feeding larvae, a lot of which look rather like the caterpillars of Lepidoptera. And then we have what is about the largest of the three groups, which is the parasitica, and that includes the ichneumons, as seen here, thus usually slightly smaller braconids, and the gall wasps and another, a number of other smaller groups. But we're uh, dealing this afternoon with the uh, bees, wasps and ants, and their terms the uh, aculeate hymenoptera, because uh, the females have stings which have been involved out of the uh, ovipositor, which all members of the order have. So that's the, the basic reason why uh, male uh, bees, wasps and ants don't have stings because evolution didn't have the raw material to work on there. <clears throat> so the high weald um, as a region uh, was uh, designated in 1983 as an area of outstanding natural beauty, and they've recently been uh, rechristened as uh, national landscapes. So the high wheels characterize as a unique and ancient landscape of rolling hills, small irregular fields, uh, abundant woods and hedges, scattered farmsteads, and sunken lanes. And <clears throat> it's divided into a number of uh, what are called character areas. Uh, uh, of which the central high wheel is one, and that's the area uh, around Tunbridge Wells, in which I've been recording uh, Hymenoptera since the mid 1990s. Uh, and because of its unique landscape and its uh, long history of traditional farming and woodland management, uh, the high wheel provides a home for many rare <clears throat> plants and animals, including a number of nationally rare and scarce uh, Hymenoptera, as we shall see. The uh, habitats uh, within the, the high weald uh, include ancient woodland, which is the most characteristic habitat. And here, aculeate hymenoptera are active along sunlit rides and paths, clearings, and woodland edges. So traditional woodland management through coppicing is very beneficial to hymenoptera, which are all sun-loving insects, apart from the ants. Uh, and uh, so if uh, <clears throat> coppicing is neglected and the canopy closes over, then the habitat deteriorates in terms of its quality for hymenoptera. <clears throat> uh, and then probably the, uh, the richest uh, habitat uh, for hymenoptera are our uh, uh, flower-rich pastures and meadows. Uh, that's the term I prefer. <clears throat> uh, commonly called unimproved or semi-improved, but that's looking at it from an agricultural uh, point of view. And um, high wheel farms have tended to be small uh, and their activity not especially intensive. So these uh, flower-rich meadows, and we all know about the 97% loss since the end of the last war, uh, that habit, open flower-rich habitat has survived better uh, in the high wheel than in many other parts of the country. And there are lots of examples uh, preserved in uh, public open spaces and in data reserves, which were carved out of the agricultural landscape at quite uh, an early date. Uh, we also have <clears throat> some areas of acid grassland like this on Tunbridge Wells Common, which were never uh, part of the formal uh, agricultural landscape, but were used uh, 
just for uh, informal grazing. Uh, and then we have Heathland, uh, another rare and uh, naturally declining habitat, uh, traditionally maintained by informal grazing. And uh, a number of examples uh, just outside the Central High Wilds, the Ashdown Forest, the great last wilderness uh, in southeast England. But there are smaller examples closer to uh, Tunbridge Wells, the uh, Tunbridge Wells Common, uh, Broadwater and Hargate Forest uh, reserves, and some up in the Toodley Pembury Woodland complex uh, as well. <clears throat> um, our traditional commons contain a, a range of habitats, uh, including unimproved grassland, uh, woodland, heathland, and particularly uh, these interesting rock outcrops like the Toad Rock at Rust Hall here, uh, with their associated sandy areas. And these are very good for Hymenoptera that nest uh, <clears throat> in the ground. And you get a lot of species here that may be more characteristic of the uh, coastal uh, sites, such as uh, sand dunes. And uh, Tommy Shores and Russell Commons have over 200 uh, Aculea Hymenoptera species between them. Uh, and then we have our man-made habitats, uh, such as parks, churchyards, cemeteries, and indeed large gardens, uh, because these are often carved out of pre-existing natural habitats, uh, especially uh, flower-rich grassland, as uh, here in Dunorland Park. And uh, cultivated plants that are nectar-rich can <clears throat> enhance the attractiveness to Hymenoptera uh, of these uh, public open spaces. So we're going to move on to look at some of the uh, characteristic examples of the, the main groups of uh, Aculea hymenoptera in the Tunbridge Wells area. Um, starting off with those uh, bees which have uh, a social life, that's to say they live in colonies with the three uh, well-known paths, the, uh, the queens which uh, lay the eggs, the fertile females, uh, the short-lived males, and the, uh, the workers, which are uh, sterile females and which uh, care for the brood. Uh, starting off with the, the one and only uh, honeybee, which uh, is essentially a domestic uh, animal, uh, though wild colonies do establish themselves from time to time and can last for many years. Uh, the jury is still out on whether honeybees are native to uh, Northern Europe or if they were uh, introduced in very ancient times from warmer climates, uh, to which they might seem better fitted with their all year round life cycle. <clears throat> um, and our other social bees are our uh, uh, nine species of bumblebees out of the British total of uh, 25. Uh, these even colonies somewhat smaller uh, than those of, of honeybees. Uh, and they too have the, the three castes, uh, queens, uh, workers uh, and males. Uh, and they normally operate on an annual cycle. Some species have two generations per year uh, with only the queens, uh, the newly fertilized queens surviving the winter and the males being short lived. Uh, that was the traditional pattern, but since the uh, 2000s, we've started to uh, see uh, winter active uh, colonies of uh, one species of bumblebee at least, but others may well follow suit. <clears throat> Traditionally, um, there are uh, six uh, common uh, species of bumblebees, which are habitat generalists uh, and which are well adapted to urban life, and you can see them all in most uh, parks uh, and gardens, uh, and they can forage from a wide range uh, of flowers uh, in those sites. Uh, the remainder of the bumblebees on the British dish are much scarcer because they've got more specialist uh, requirements adapted to particular habitats like heathland and uh, uh, flower-rich grassland. Uh, in fact, uh, since this this graphic was was created, uh, there's been an extra. Uh, common bumblebee added, uh, the tree bumblebee, which is a relatively recent uh, colonist from the continent. <clears throat> <clears throat> so the six common bumblebees, the commonest of all is the uh, buff-tailed. Uh, this is the one with the very large 
queens that you see uh, early in the year traditionally uh, looking for a new nest site. But uh, as I mentioned, they have started to have uh, colonies continuing all the way through the winter, particularly in urban areas where the, uh, the general more mild winters temperatures boosted by the urban heat island effect. Uh, and also there's lots of nice uh, winter flowering plants like Mahonia uh, seen here, which provide uh, nectar and pollen for them. Um, just a little word about uh, nomenclature uh, before we get uh, farther. Uh, apart from the bumblebees, uh, a few of the aculeates have long established English names. Uh, there is a new set of, of names for uh, the solitary bees now, which were uh, devised by Stephen Falk for his uh, uh, Flickr site originally and, and later uh, his field guide. But uh, uh, since I've not memorized all those new names, uh, I will use mainly the, the, the scientific names in this in this talk. <clears throat> uh, this is the male of the, uh, the white-tailed bumblebee, uh, Bombus leucorum, which uh, is uh, very similar uh, to uh, the, the buff-tailed. <clears throat> Uh, here we have the garden bumblebee, Bombus hortorum, which has uh, an extra uh, yellow band on the back of the thorax. <clears throat> uh, Bombus praetorum, the uh, early mining bee, uh, is so called not because it's particularly early out of hibernation, because it was uh, traditionally before the uh, winter active uh, thing started. Uh, this is traditionally the first. A bumblebee where the queen's got the colonies going and you had very tiny uh, workers uh, in the, the, the first uh, generation there. <clears throat> uh, Bombus lapidarius, the, uh, the red-tailed bumblebee, is a very uh, distinctive one too. Uh, Bombus pascuorum, the common carder bee, is the only uh, all brown uh, bumblebee that's been recorded uh, in you know, recent times from uh, our area. Uh, there are, of course, uh, two other uh, rare Ricardo bees which look very similar, uh, Muscorum and Humulus, but uh, you need to go to the uh, uh, north or um, south coast of, of, of Kent generally to uh, uh, to see those. Um, and then the the new kid on the block is is, is uh, Bombus hypnorum, the uh, the tree bumblebee, which uh, characteristically nests uh, above ground, whereas the others uh, normally nest at, at or below uh, ground level. And uh, this uh, can look a bit like a common card bee, but it has got a white tail, although you don't always see that in a photograph such as the one here. And these are the ones that will often uh, adopt uh, uh, bird boxes uh, in, in your garden. Uh, we do have two of the uh, scarcer bumblebees uh, recorded from uh, the Central High Weald, although the only, only one that's well uh, established is this one, Bombus janellus, which is the heath bumblebee. Uh, it's like a miniature version of uh, the garden bumblebee, it has that extra yellow band on the back of the thorax, it's somewhat smaller though. And uh, this one is particularly characteristic of our uh, heathland areas like uh, Tunbridge Wells Common and the uh, RSPB Broadwater Warren Reserve. It has, in fact, two generations a year. The first one is smaller and a little bit uh, uh, elusive. You get it at things like gorse. Uh, but uh, when a heather comes out uh, in high summer, you get the larger uh, second generation. And they do sometimes come into uh, urban parks as well, particularly where you've got uh, cultivated heathers. Uh, and then we do have one uh, single solitary record of uh, Shilkardaby uh, Bomba Silvarum, which is a, a, a specialist of, of high quality uh, flower rich grassland. Uh, sadly, only ever recorded the one uh, down in the in, in, in the Groombridge area. So sadly, that may that may have been some of the last uh, uh, survivor in our area. It might recolonize if the habitats uh, improve. Uh, in future. Um, and as well as the, uh, uh, as it were, mainstream uh, bumblebees, we also have the uh, uh, the cuckoo bumblebees, which uh, invade 
existing nests uh, and they kill or expel the queen and establish control over the existing workers who then rear the brood of the intruder. And there are uh, dedicated cuckoo species associated with all of these six uh, traditional common bumblebees. This is the commonest of the cuckoo bumblebees, uh, Bombus vestalis, vestal cuckoo bumblebee. And uh, the uh, cuckoo bumblebees are sort of characterized by having these quite, quite very dark, uh, smoky wings. And although it looks quite like it's a uh, uh, buff tailed bumblebee host, the, uh, the white tail has this yellow. Uh, flash which separates it from the black at the base of the abdomen. Uh, and this is a male of the Bombus rupestris, which associates with red tailed bumblebee and again is very similar to its host. Uh, but most of uh, Britain's 250 plus uh, bee species are, are solitary species. That's to say, each female makes its own uh, individual nest and uh, stocks it with uh, um, nest baromox, stocks it with nectar uh, and pollen uh, as a food store for its young. Uh, there's no actual parental care beyond getting things ready, and they lay their eggs and seal the uh, uh, the nest up, and then the uh, the young uh, just develop uh, within within the nest burrow. Uh, they may congregate in large numbers in favourite spots uh, like this uh, sand pit on. The, uh, Tunbridge Wells Common, which has also got floral resources, as you see, uh, all the way around. Uh, but uh, they're not uh, collaborating uh, in any way. Uh, if you see a big uh, a site, nest site like this, we'll sometimes talk about a colony uh, of solitary bees. It's a little bit confusing, so maybe somehow aggregation uh, is a better term. Uh, we have about uh, 160 uh, species of uh, uh, solitary bees uh, locally. Um, the division between solitary and solitary is not absolutely clear cut because there are some uh, quote solitary bees that are starting to uh, evolve a rudimentary form of social life as we shall see. And uh, the, the the majority of the, the solitary bees are, are mining bees, that's to say they dig uh, burrows in the ground, they often tend to have a preference for sort of flat ground or sloping ground or vertical ground. Um, this is a characteristic uh, nesting aggregation of the uh, ivy bee in the vertical uh, sandy ground on Tunbridge Wells Common. And uh, this gives you an idea of what might be happening down uh, inside the burrow. You've got the sort of blob of uh, nectar and pollen there and the little larvae feeding on it. Uh, some may have more than one uh, generation per year. Um, uh, normally uh, the uh, uh, the young stay uh, in the in the wind through the winter in the burrow and uh, uh, emerge in the spring, although in some cases you have the adults uh, emerging and pairing off in the uh, uh, in late summer and then the females um, hibernating. Uh, male and female um, solitary bees often look uh, very different, and this is sort of common through through the uh, the hymenoptera. I think the hymenoptera are probably the only uh, uh, insects where, if you look at an identification key, you have sort of separate keys for for males and females. It's like the two sexes have gone off on their separate uh, evolutionary tracks. Uh, male um, solitary bees often uh, uh, what I used to call swarm. Uh, people have started using the term lecking that comes from birding as a as, as a term for this. Uh, so you get this mate searching strategy where males uh, en masse will patrol nest sites, they'll patrol linear features like hedgerows, uh, zigzag up and down vertical features like like, like tree trunks or, or swarm around uh, isolated uh, bushes uh, in the landscape. Uh, the largest group of solitary bees are the uh, mining bees are the andrinas, uh, broad bodied, ranging from honeybee size uh, downwards. And uh, they have uh, uh, cuckoo bees, which belong to the wasp like genus Nomada. And uh, the phenomenon of cuckoo bees uh, occurs all the way through the, uh, uh, the solitary. Uh, the solitary bees, a lot of species or groups of species have uh, dedicated cuckoo species that 
um, sneak uh, into their nests and lay their own eggs there. So this is the male uh, of Andrina Clarkella, uh, Clark's mining bee. And this is the female, as I said, you can see they do look uh, very different, hence the separate keys that you have uh, in uh, identification works. And often associated with the uh, wooded uh, areas, so at least sort of wooded hedgerows. Uh, and this is often the earliest uh, solitary bee that comes out in the spring. My uh, all-time record is the 8th of February. Um, and this is uh, Nomina Nucophthalma, which is the uh, dedicated uh, cuckoo bee that uh, associates with uh, Andrina Clarkella and uh, uh, appears sort of hovering around their, their nest sites uh, just after the females have started nesting. So the males come out first uh, and swarm over the site, uh, waiting for the females to emerge. And then the females emerge and pair off and uh, uh, start uh, digging their nest burrows, and then uh, the cuckoos uh, appear after that. Uh, Andrina flavor peas, uh, yellow-legged mining bee, is a very common park and garden species with uh, sort of fawn-colored hair bands that fade to white. This is the male, and this is the female. And this is an uh, nomad of fucata, which is the, the brightly colored uh, nomad bee, cuckoo bee, that uh, associates with them. And both the host and the uh, the cuckoo have uh, two generations per year. This is uh, Andrina hemoroa with a distinctive uh, orange tail, not a common uh, park and garden species. And the most uh, spectacular of the of the mining bees, Andrina fulva, the, the tawny mining bee, when it's fresh, it's got these two uh, different shades of red, the scarlet on the thorax and the orange on the abdomen. <clears throat> uh, often nesting in lawns, makes little sort of volcano uh, shapes, sort of heaps uh, of spoil uh, around the uh, entrance of the nest burrow. And uh, that's the male, which has these very long mandibles and the sort of spike uh, on the cheek there. And it has an associated cuckoo, which, uh, well, strangely enough, for a sort of common host, this is actually a naturally rare species, but we have some good, uh, it's quite a stronghold for it in the uh, Tunbridge Wells area. Uh, Hawkebury Cemetery, actually, is, is one of the best, and this is where this one was, uh, was photographed. Uh, the very distinctive uh, ashy mining bee, uh, Andrina cineraria there. Uh, the more nondescript uh, Andrina scotica, chocolate mining bee. Had quite a lot of name changes uh, in the last few years. Uh, and that's uh, nomad of flavour, probably the commonest of the uh, uh, the nomad bees, the, the cuckoo bees, uh, that associates with uh, the last one, chocolate mining bee. Uh, often found uh, sort of exploring sort of woodland path sides, uh, looking for host nests. And uh, one of the uh, denizens of uh, sandy ground uh, that I mentioned, often I often find a lot of these on, on the coast, on coastal sand dunes, uh, but around the rocks on Tunbridge Hills and Russell Commons and similar sites, you can find uh, Andrina barbalabris. This is the female and they they nest in the sort of consolidated sand, which is underneath uh, the loose sand on top. And they've got an uncanny ability, even though there's nothing visible uh, on the surface, to uh, find their way back to their nest. So just a dive into the uh, open, uh, apparently featureless sand, uh, looking for their nest burrows. Uh, and this is the uh, the male with its, uh, what I always call its desert camouflage. So when the males are necking, uh, flying low over the, the white sand, actually quite difficult to spot. Uh, and these have a cuckoo bee, which runs with different genus, uh, Spicodes, uh, little red and black uh, bees there. Uh, one of the dedicated heathland species, uh, Andrina uh, fuscopes, uh, some bees only uh, come out uh, in very late summer when the uh, heather is in flower. And that's uh, no window, um, 
uh, Rufa peas, which is the little uh, uh, cuckoo bee that associates with that heathland species. Uh, Andrina labiata, a uh, flower rich grassland uh, specialist, has a uh, uh, naturally rare uh, cuckoo that uh, we do have locally. And uh, two more uh, flower rich grassland specialists, uh, Andrina falvago, with very, very large pollen baskets. Uh, and Andrina humilis, they both like uh, cats here. <clears throat> and uh, they are, and I, I'm glad to say, of increasing uh, in the Tunbridge Wells area now. Uh, one of our highlights, uh, Andrina gravida, uh, a very uh, beautiful species with its uh, golden pollen baskets and white hairs on the face, white bands on the abdomen. This is a red data book one species that has started to... Uh, increase latterly and is good uh, population uh, in uh, our town centre park, Calvary Grounds, uh, where it's recently been joined by its uh, uh, cuckoo, uh, Nomida bifaciata, which is a recent colonist from the, the near continent. Um, Andrina bucephala has one of those that has shared nest entrances uh, for the female. So that sort of gives you an idea of how social life might have started to uh, to evolve. Uh, and that has a nationally rare uh, associated cuckoo, which we have locally, uh, Nomada herpes. <clears throat> uh, another quite substantial genus of the mining bees uh, is, uh, well, the two twin genera, Halictus and Lassiglossum, which used to be all lumped together. They have a more Slender build, uh, generally the females pair uh, before hibernating through the winter. Some species in this group have started to uh, uh, evolve uh, social life with a small number of workers that are a little smaller uh, than the regular females. Uh, and the associated cuckoos generally belong to that uh, black and red genus Phacodes that we saw one of earlier. So this is uh, Halictus tumulorum. Uh, the biggest of the group, uh, you can easily mistake it for an and Andrina, uh, but it does, the, all the females of this group have a, a keel um, down the centre of the final segment. Uh, so uh, Stephen Falk has, uh, has christened this group as, as the furrow bees. Halictus uh, tumulorum is one of the several in this group that has a metallic uh, bronzy green um, coloration. <clears throat> uh, Lassiglossum calciatum is a very common urban species with its uh, uh, off-white uh, hair bands and pale tips to the segments. And this is one where you can actually often find nesting aggregations even between uh, paving slabs uh, along urban streets. There's some very small ones, sort of, sort of no more than large uh, ant size uh, in the genus uh, Lassiglossum. This is Lassiglossum morio, which is one of the uh, green metallic species. Uh, Lassiglossum zonulum is a late flying, not a woodland uh, species, which is particularly fond of devil's bit scabious that we have quite a lot of uh, locally in sort of damp grassland and uh, woodland clearings. Uh, and that has a nationally scarce uh, associated cuckoo species, the Cody's scapocolis. <clears throat> uh, smaller group of mining bees, Calites, line their nest burrows with an impervious secretion that sets uh, somewhat like um, cellophane film. Uh, this is the quite commonest, often found in uh, parks and gardens, uh, Calites davisanus, which uh, likes uh, composites like uh, yarrow and um, and tansy uh, and and well carrot is another one and this is actually a cultivated uh, form of uh, of yarrow in uh, one of our urban parks um, and Calites succinctus is one of those heathland uh, specialists which uh, has just the one generation a year in the late summer when the uh, uh, the heather start to come into bloom. And the Calites have cuckoos in the very bizarre looking genus uh, Epiolus, nothing else quite like this uh, 
in the, the bee world. And there are two British species of these, both of which we have in the uh, central high wheel. This is uh, Epiolus variegatus, which goes with the uh, composite feeding species. And uh, then there's uh, Epiolus uh, crucija that goes with the uh, heather feeding one. Uh, a couple of the recent variety, recent arrivals, uh, Cletes hedery, which is the ivy uh, mining bee, uh, found a sort of a vacant, sort of vacant niche, uh, really. Uh, not a, most bees are sort of coming to the end of their cycle by the time the ivy comes into flower. Uh, and this is relatively recent uh, colonists from the near continent, which is now sort of spread uh, all over. Uh, southern Britain is constantly uh, pushing, pushing northwards, and uh, these are sort of sandy yellow uh, hair bands are very uh, distinctive as well as uh, the plant that is visiting, and these have started to have quite very large uh, nesting aggregations such as this one around that uh, sand pit on Tumpish Wells Common. Uh, and uh, another new arrival, uh, Caletes uh, cunicularius. This is a, a spring species. It's what we call a nesty, uh, uh, mating ball here where males are sort of competing uh, for, for a female. And uh, it was, it is a native species insofar as there are <clears throat> native colonies on some uh, sand dune sites uh, in the uh, east of, of, of Britain. Uh, but there's been recent spread to uh, inland sites, probably from uh, colonisation from the near continent. And that has uh, very recently appeared in the sandy ground on Rust Hall Common. The uh, genus uh, Melitta, uh, often specialist on a particular uh, type of flower. Uh, this, this one, um, uh, Melitta leporina, uh, likes uh, white clover. These have truncated uh, antennae and also what I tend to call big feet, which are the uh, expanded uh, final tarsal segment. Uh, and there's one that uh, associates particularly with uh, red barts here, which is not a uh, particularly common plant uh, in the high wheel. Remember, um, <clears throat> um, a couple of years ago, we had a Kent Field Club meeting at uh, uh, down Orland Park, and somebody spotted red barks for the first time, like I said, oh, we need to look out for the associated bee, and then right on cue, it uh, appeared. Uh, and that's Nomida Flavo Picta, which is the cuckoo bee associating with the uh, uh, genus Melitta. Uh, the genus Panurgus is two British species, both of which we have. Uh, very fond of cat's ear in uh, uh, flower-rich grassland. Panergus banksianus with very large pollen baskets and smaller uh, Panergus calcaratus. Um, the hairy footed flower bee, um, Anthophora plumipes, very characteristic spring species, looks very much like a miniature uh, bumblebee. Uh, the female is, is very dark, as seen there, like a little all black bumblebee, just with golden pollen baskets. Uh, so those are spring mem uh, members of the uh, uh, that uh, genus, the flower bee group, and there are two uh, summer uh, flying members of that group too, the uh, green-eyed uh, flower bee, Anthophora bimaculata, and uh, uh, Anthophora quadrimaculata there. Uh, the one and only uh, pantaloon bee, uh, Desipoda hertipes, with its enormously large uh, pollen baskets, that's something that sort of appeared uh, in our area uh, in recent years. And the amazing uh, longhorn bee, Eucera longicornis, which, uh, where well, the males have these amazingly, uh, amazingly long antennae. Uh, uh, and this has started to, to spread, uh, which, is, which is nice to see in our area, including a number of our uh, urban parks. Um, some uh, solitary bees are aerial nesters. They nest in uh, dead timber, hollow plant stems, or make use of pre-existing cavities like beetle holes uh, in timber or thatch uh, in some cases. And these are the ones that particularly benefit from uh, the bee hotels that are very popular today. This is uh, Heriades truncorum. 
uh, female flying in front of some holes in a little sort of informal uh, bee hotel created in a wood pile at the uh, Chiddingston Reserve. Uh, Colostoma florisomni, very fond of uh, buttercups. Uh, Colostoma campanularum, very tiny, as you can see there from the scale uh, of the flower. Uh, forages from campanulas. Uh, the wool cardaby, uh, Anthidium manicatum, is a uh, uh, characteristic gark and park and garden species. The uh, females uh, divide the cells uh, within their nest burrow with uh, fluff, like thistle down that they get from, from flowers. And so this uh, garden flower, uh, Lanzia is very popular because it's both a pollen and nectar source uh, and also has uh, these, these white hairs which uh, serve very well for nest building. And this is one where the males are very uh, strongly uh, territorial uh, and will defend a little patch uh, of flowers where the females are likely to be. Uh, the leafcutter bees are very distinctive. They have, as many of these aerial nesters do, uh, a pollen brush. Uh, underneath the abdomen rather than <clears throat> uh, pollen baskets on the hind legs as uh, uh, most other bees do. This is the commonest, the uh, uh, patchwork leaf cutter, uh, Megacarly centuncularis, a slightly larger uh, Megacarly willabiella. And uh, males of uh, willabiella have uh, what I always think of as white gloves, uh, expanded white uh, front legs which are used in courtship interaction. This male is uh, resting as they often do uh, in an old nest burrow during uh, inclement weather conditions and waiting for the sun to come out. And uh, this is what happens uh, inside a, a leaf cutter bee. Uh, nests, they cut these semicircular and circular bits out of leaves and, and make these cells in which are, are contained a mush of nectar and pollen. You can see the little larva feeding in there. Um, the cuckoos that associate with leafcutter bees are the uh, sharp horn bees in the genus Celioxis. Uh, so this is a female with the single spike at the end of the abdomen, and this is the male that has multiple uh, spines at the end. The little yellow-faced bees like this uh, Hylaeus uh, signatus uh, nest in plant stems. Um, this one does too, a uh, little blue carpenter bee, Ceratina cyania, uh, nests in the pith of the uh, old uh, bramble stems. The uh, red uh, mason bee, Osmia bicornis, as it's been uh, recently renamed, it was uh, Osmia rufa, that's the classic. A uh, species that so you get attracted to a nest in, in bee hotels. And uh, they uh, gather mud from the sides of streams uh, or from puddles to make the dividers uh, between their, uh, uh, between the cells in their, in their nest. So that's what happens uh, in, within the holes of the old bamboo canes in a bee hotel. <clears throat> uh, related species, blue carpenter bee, um, Osmia cirillescens. Uh, and one of our rarities, this is one of the unusual, well, there's not many bees that are very specific to woodland, uh, but this is, this is Osmia pilicornis, the fringe horned uh, um, carpenter bee, um, mason, fringe horned mason bee. And this is a nationally uh, rare and declining species because of the a uh, lack of management in many, many woodlands. Um, and it has a small enclave in the Pembury Tudley Woods area. That's the uh, the male, uh, that's the female visiting Bugle, one of its favorite flowers, and uh, gathering uh, leaf pulp to make the uh, dividers uh, within its nest burrow. So we'll move on to the uh, uh, the wasps, we have uh, seven species of uh, social wasps uh, in the uh, the high wheel area, uh, including the two most common, uh, the uh, uh, the common wasp, Vestula vulgaris, and the uh, uh, the German wasp, Vestula germanica. These are the, the queens which uh, hibernate 
uh, over the winter and come out uh, in the spring to start new colonies off. Fiddling, of course, is uh, paper nests uh, made out of uh, wood pulp. And there have been a couple of uh, relatively recent additions to the uh, British list of social wasps with the uh, the so-called Euro wasp, uh, Dolichovespula media, uh, and its uh, relative Dolichovespula saxonica uh, colonising from the near continent. Uh, and to this group belongs the uh, the hornet. Uh, some people may muddle up uh, Dolichovespula media, which has some red on it, with the hornet. But in the hornet, all the bands on the abdomen are brown, and it's a somewhat larger insect. These uh, sort of declined uh, in Kent uh, in the 1950s, sort of disappeared completely and retreated to the West Country. But since uh, about the year 2000, they started to re-establish themselves, so often in woodland, often nesting in uh, in hollow trees. Here are some uh, workers uh, defending the entrance to a nest in a hollow tree. Um, and then the uh, the larger numbers of uh, solitary wasps, uh, which uh, as the bees uh, make a food store of nectar and pollen, the uh, uh, solitary wasps uh, feed their young on the, on the small uh, invertebrates, which the female paralyzes with her sting so that they, they stay fresh uh, while being uh, eaten by the young down in the nest burrow. Uh, some nest in soil, some in dead wood or plant stems or pre-existing cavities like uh, beetle holes uh, in timber. There are about 130 uh, solitary uh, wasp species in uh, our area. Uh, this is one of the uh, the mason wasps, which is quite common, uh, Ancestrosaurus gazella. Uh, they divide their cells with the clay plugs, feed their larvae on caterpillars. Uh, and often nest in pre-existing uh, uh, cavities. Uh, Odinera spinipes, which is another uh, mason wasp, builds these uh, uh, extraordinary mud chimneys uh, over the uh, entrances to its nest burrows in banks or root plates, as in this case, uh, which are supposed to help prevent uh, cuckoo species and other predators from getting into the nest and they don't though they don't seem to work particularly successfully because here's an associated uh, cuckoo wasp one of the uh, uh, amazing uh, uh, red and green metallic uh, ruby wasps uh, here's one uh, crisis viridula the dedicated species for that uh, mason bee making its way into the clay chimney into the nest uh, the uh, Heath Potter bee, a uh, very uh, distinctive uh, appearance there. Um, Eumenes coarctatus, uh, in a genus all on its own. Uh, here it is, is a female gathering, uh, gathering mud to make its amazing little uh, clay pots, which it stocks with small caterpillars. And this is, uh, I've got a recent discovery in our area, in the uh, Warren Reserve. The spider hunting wasps uh, are a very characteristic little family. Uh, they run rather than fly and they capture free living spiders like wolf spiders. Uh, most of them live in, sort of come out in high summer uh, and are active in sort of hot, sunny weather. But there's a couple of spring flying ones, including this one, the Preocnemis perturbator, that's feeding here on wood spurge. And this is uh, one of the commonest uh, red and black species. A lot of them have that uh, color scheme, uh, arachnospira, and sex. And it's uh, pulling a crab spider paralyzed uh, into its burrow, which you can see at the top. And this is one of the, the all black uh, species, an Optius nigerimus, uh, dragging a wolf spider much bigger than itself. Uh, Mophila sabulosa is a very distinctive species with this amazingly uh, slender wasp waist found in sandy uh, heathland areas uh, uh, up on the, the heathland of the, of the Tudley 
woods complex and also around the rocks on Tunbridge Wells and Rustwell Commons. Uh, they feed their young on caterpillars. Uh, little uh, black and white uh, Oxabellus uniglumis, uh, its blue eyes, uh, carries its prey, small flies, impaled on its sting, as you see here. And uh, Tachystex pompiliformis uh, makes a food store from uh, grasshopper nymphs. And it's amazing how they can uh, uh, subdue and uh, get back to their nest, something so much larger than, than itself. They can't, of course, carry that in flight because it's too heavy, but they, they, uh, um, they just get their wings going to give them a little bit of lift as they're pulling the uh, paralyzed grasshopper along. And uh, this species, uh, Tacifex, has a little tiny dedicated uh, cuckoo wasp that uh, sneaks into its nest and is, uh, tends to be active only in sort of very hot, uh, sunny weather, Hedicridium ardens. Uh, this is uh, a state of Boops. Uh, slightly weird name. Some people think it sort of, sort of looks as if it ought to be pronounced boots, but it's a disyllable, means cow aisle. A uh, bull eye, like because the eyes of the male occupy almost the whole head, and uh, that uh, hunts for shield bug nymphs uh, and has its little cuckoo species, uh, Hedocridium roseum, which has a very distinctive, sort of pinky, orangey, matte coloured, rather metallic uh, abdomen. Uh, Melanus arvensis, the, the field uh, digger wasp, preys on the uh, uh, flies from the muskid or uh, blowfly families. Cerceris uh, aranaria, um, they inhabit sandy areas and feeds its young on those big uh, uh, weevils that uh, uh, you find associated with oak trees and other, other nut bearing trees. And uh, Cerceris ribiensis, uh, one of the, uh, the commoner uh, digger wasps. Uh, preys on small solitary bees uh, as a food store for its young. And this is sharing a thistle flower that's at the top with, with its nemesis, the uh, attractive uh, uh, cuckoo bee, um, Hedicrum nobili. And then finally, uh, we come to the uh, the ants, um, of which there are uh, around uh, 40 British species, about a third of which uh, we have uh, here in the central high weald. Uh, most of them are social with the three castes uh, that we mentioned, uh, the queens, the workers, and the short-lived males. Um, the queens can live uh, a decade or more, so uh, ant nests operate on more uh, than just a yearly cycle, as most other uh, hymenoptera do. Uh, and they can be active under mild conditions uh, all the way through the year. And depending on the species, there can be you know tens of thousands or more uh, workers in a nest, uh, rearing the young, sustaining the fabric of the nest, and foraging for food, uh, mostly other small creatures plus nectar or honeydew or seeds uh, in the case of some species. Uh, this is uh, a nest of the uh, uh, black garden ant. This is a very common uh, urban species. You often get it nesting in gardens and uh, between uh, paving bricks uh, on pavements. Uh, the uh, what are sort of commonly called sort of the petrae ant eggs uh, you see here, in fact, the pupae or the cocoons, rather, in which the, the, the pupae are contained. <clears throat> um, and it's the um, a black garden ant, that's just Niger, that uh, produces the well-known uh, flying ants, which uh, regularly cause, cause quite a panic, and you sort of have to tell people, you know, it only lasts for a, a day or so. Uh, what happens with these is they tend to... Uh, all ants have a, a, a an annual sort of nuptial flight where the uh, the winged queens uh, and the males uh, pair off, 
uh, and the uh, the short-lived males die and the queens uh, seek out suitable places to uh, start off new colonies, at which point they shed their wings. Uh, and the black garden ant tends to synchronize its emergence uh, over quite wide areas uh, following uh, cues from the weather conditions. And so that's why you get these uh, uh, big uh, appearances of, of, of flying ants in a certain area. Uh, these uh, humps and bumps uh, you commonly see in uh, uh, old established uh, pastures or other grass and areas and uh, people never sometimes aren't quite sure what they actually are uh, but these are the nest mounds of the uh, uh, yellow meadow ant uh, Lassius flavus and this is uh, ant city uh, as I call it on Tunbridge Wells Common showing up well in the low winter sun. Uh, the mounds are used to regulate the temperature at which the young are maintained so uh, uh, larvae and pupae are moved uh, up and down uh, within the nest. And these mounds may last for many decades and get very large, and they are characteristic of high quality uh, grassland that hasn't been um, ploughed up in uh, modern times. The uh, ants themselves spend most of their time, apart from the, the nuptial flight, uh, uh, once a year, spend most of the time uh, foraging underground. So you rarely see them uh, unless the nest is actually disturbed, but they are the same size uh, as the black garden ant, but obviously they have that clear yellow coloration. Uh, last year's fuliginosus, the, the jet ant, a distinctive large uh, species of ant, uh, shiny black with that characteristic heart-shaped head, um, makes nests out of uh, wood pulp, uh, inside often hollow trees or the inside walls and so on and actually founds its nest by taking over those of the existing species. Uh, Formica fusca is a fairly ubiquitous member, the commonest member of the wood ant uh, genus, looks like a much larger version of the black garden Ants are uh, larger and longer legged, but tends not to be found so often in uh, in urban areas. Uh, but the classic uh, wood ant uh, is we have is is Formica rufa in uh, wooded uh, uh, areas, often also uh, where wood and heathland uh, join together, as in the uh, RSVB Broadwater Warren Reserve. Uh, these nest mounds of pine needles and twigs are the largest structures made by insects uh, in Britain. And wood ants are a species of conservation concern uh, on a European level, but we have so we have very important uh, populations of these uh, in the in the high weald. Uh, these are the uh, the wood ants, uh, black head and abdomen, and. Uh, uh, orangey coloured thorax and they uh, go out uh, foraging, bringing back other insects as food uh, for the uh, the young in the nest. Uh, these two workers have captured a mining bee uh, and here are some uh, bringing down a bumblebee and they were successful, they've got reinforcements in there are uh, taking the bumblebee back to their nest. <clears throat> and the uh, the nest mounds of the, the wood ant owl, and since their own little uh, little ecosystem, there's some guest species of various orders which are associated. Uh, the little guest ant, uh, Formicoxenus uh, nitidulus, uh, makes this nest within the mounds uh, of the wood ant, and it seems to be so small. Uh, that the wood ants just totally uh, ignore it. The uh, leaf beetle, Clytra quadripunctata, uh, the larvae uh, live inside the wood ant nests, uh, devouring the brood, but the workers think they are part of the brood and so they uh, ignore them. And uh, the scarce seven spot ladybird, uh, Coxinella magnifica, <clears throat> Uh, specialises in feeding on the, the aphids that the, uh, uh, the wood ants are milking for honeydew. Yeah.
Um, and finally, uh, we have the fascinating uh, red uh, slave-making ant uh, for Micah sanguinea, uh, found uh, in some of our heathland areas which uh, species had a starring role in, in Darwin's uh, uh, origin of species. Um, they uh, capture young uh, larvae and pupae from other ant species and rear them as uh, auxiliary workers uh, in, their, in their own nests. They look like a bit like wood ants themselves, but have the red uh, head matching the, the, the thorax. Uh, however, uh, they can... Uh, get on quite happily uh, without uh, the the auxiliary workers, and in fact, most of the colonies uh, on the RSV Water Warren uh, don't seem to have the uh, the auxiliary workers there. <clears throat> and so, I just close with uh, this rather uh, entertaining picture of uh, nest construction uh, by uh, for like a, a sanguinea uh, with one worker that looks like it's uh, tossing the caber. Uh, and the other one looks like it's turning round and saying, hey, what's it you do with that? Uh, and so with, uh, with that, we close our tour through the, the bees, moths and ants of the Central High Weald. Thank you.